here are the tools that we are going to change bow here. Here we have a bow here from Canada, from Siberia, from Mongolia. Different of bow here. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Olson, a Norwegian violin maker, bow maker, and a violin string maker living in Japan. Today we are showing how to change bow here. First of all, change bow here is not a simple job. It is a professional work. I don't recommend violinists do it by yourself, at least not in the beginning. You can use some old bow or uh, the bows you don't want to practice. Don't work on your own bow in the beginning. Uh, change bow here is not an easy job. If we receive a bow from a customer, the first thing you need to do is to check the, uh, the condition of the bow. If there is any crack, if there is any damage, or any mark, if everything is okay. If you found something wrong, you have to show to your customer right away. You must tell your customer, say, hey, uh, do you notice there's something here or something here? Or oh, you can ask, oh, there's some more crack here. Do you want to repair? Things like this, just to confirm. Because you don't want to get in yourself in trouble. If everything is okay, the bow is fine. And also, it is straight, not bent. Everything is fine. Then you can do the repair, change the bow here. Cut it this way, like this, and like this. Roll it and throw it away. Then you just clean up with the bow. See, we have to be very careful with this. Slowly. Both sides, slowly, both sides, both sides. If this come off where, well, fine, you can use it again. If it is not good, you have to make a new one. Make sure everything goes to the same place. You need something like this to put everything in here. So you, won't, you don't have to, to, to look for it all the time. Here has a crack here, so I must tell the customer, See, there's a crack here. It's okay not to repair, but if you want to repair, uh, you must know I didn't do it. This is original. So here I just put a little bit of crazy glue to glue it. Very little from inside, then you just push it, glue it. If it is too big, then you have to repair it, have to make a new one. Uh, this material, the old tradition, we use mammoth, or we can use uh, bone. But nowadays, many people use plastic. I like silver. See, this is my bow. I, li I like to use uh, silver. This is silver. Uh, then I put one pin, two pin here, and one pin here, and one pin here. So I pin it, so it won't come off. We, we don't have this problem. But to make sure this edge is not too sharp. If it's too sharp, it will cut the bow here. So that's something we have to be careful. Let's continue this bow. And uh, the second thing to do is we take this off. Put it here, take this off. Now we use this, take it off. You have to be very careful, not too hard, not to make it change, change shape, but enough to put like this to get it out. Or if you have a better way, do your better way. But this is always I do to take it out. out. Then next thing is to, I have to take this key. Oh, I'm so, sorry, this wood. Key is Japanese word. Uh, I have to take this little wood out. 
So I use this open knife that I made yesterday. Then I take this out. Then I put the in the flock setter. I put a little rosin on, on my on the song. So then slice come off. Again, take this out. Now this is broken, we have to make a new one. here we use is uh, about 5 to 5.5 5 grams. I use 6 grams because my hair is too, it's very long so I have to cut very much so I use 6 grams. I put a little bit of rosin, a little bit of rosin so it will not slippery. Push it in, then put a little, this little wood. It would also use a little bit of muscle. Slide in. Now we put the perfect in. Then use your finger, push that down and pour it, pour it, and slide this in. Okay, use thread. Then you put it in like this. You get all your hair in. Then you push it back. Make sure everything is fit perfectly okay. Just screw it. Only hold it, it's enough. And then you pull it down this way. And the cut the hair. The next, we're going to wash it. Just use ordinary water, tap water, and ordinary soap. Uh, don't use conditioner, don't use shampoo, only use soap because there is some oil on the bowl here, we have to wash it. Otherwise, the rosin won't, you can't get rust on the hair. Here, I have soap, soap it. Then use ordinary towel to dry it. Not completely dry. I want to take the water away. That's enough. Some people use a bow, uh, the hair bow set. I don't use it because I'm travel a lot. Uh, I use as few tools as possible. Here I just do it by myself, like this. Here, this is an ordinary comb. 
two like this. One year ago, I was so fat that I can't bend like this. After one year exercise, now I can do it easily, no problem. Here comes to the key point. You have to look at this very closely. Here, my hand is just before, in front of this hole. The lens is very important in front. And then you hold it. I use my thumb to push a little bit forward like this. So make the bow here even. Then I put it like this. Now you can see here is a little edge here. So when you bend it here, it will be fine. Now I use the thread, tie it up. I do one and two. Make sure everything is fine. Okay. Cut it. Now you cut it. Leave it like this. Then you use a lighter. Or you can use a alcohol lamp. Also, you put a little bit of rosin. Give the rosin. Don't on the top, but on the side. On the side. Here, I'll show you it again. Never on the top, but on the side to burn the head like this. Okay, now we lose it, lose it, and also put it back here. Secure. Now you understand why I will do that. Because you pull this way, then you pull this way. Okay. So we have we have a thing like this. Hmm. Rosin again. Always a rosin. Now we put it in. Make sure it's in the in the middle. Here also I use rosin. The rosin will stop from moving. Here we should test if the bow here is even, if the, the lens is also okay. Now it's too short. See? So I will take it out a little bit. Here is fine, the lens is fine. Then we check the bow here if the both sides are even or not. If it's even, okay. Then I push it in. We do this. Here, this is just a screwdriver. I just cut on the top, so make it smooth, make it flat. I made all those tools by myself. You should be able to finish this work by uh, about five minutes. Otherwise, the bow here will dry, then it will be difficult to work. You have to work on it when it is wet. Finally, I put this little wood in.
only final a little bit we we'll put a little glue this is hide glue violin glue hide glue just use a little bit just a little not much okay Now I use this, put it here, and the hammer here. Perfect. I always put the bow here a little bit more on this side, because the violin needs to play on this side. I show you. I put a little bit more here on this side than this side. This has a little, uh, little thicker. This is thinner. Why? Because the violin needs to play this way. Also, I put strong here on this side and weak here on this side because the violin needs to play very much like this. So we have, you feel the bow is strong, stronger if you put a move here on this side. After bow here, you check it. Look, look closely. You put the, put the coal here from the beginning to the end. Must be every single hair is straight. Not one hair is twisted. If one hair is twisted, you, you will bring trouble to the violinist. See? Straight. This is one point you have to check your bow here. Your hair. The second thing is there's no loose hair. The bow here should be all to even straight. So that's a good bow here. Uh, for the dry, also you check the, the you check the stick if it's straight. Then finally, when you dry it here, you put the hair on the in the middle, put it the stick like this. Then you you put it somewhere to dry. Put it here to dry for about ten minutes. Then you can wash your hands. You can talk to your customers. Uh, you can uh, get money, get paid. Then everything is finished. You put the rosin. Okay. Uh, hello everyone, I have one information for people in the world. I have reached this age now, from a violinist to a violin maker, bow maker and a string maker. I have... Huh?